Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about gases and we're going to look specifically at the fact that gases can change their volume. Uh, we're able to see changing shape in liquids, but gases can change their volume, which makes them really much different and much interesting. And because they're invisible, uh, you know, we don't often, we're not often able to see gases and see how they're behaving. So if you need to get a hold of me, uh, you can reach me at rcrawford at jcpsmail.org. Let's jump right in. So one of the things that we've already talked about is the fact that gases can spread out and fill any container we put them into, okay? So if we look at this picture, let's suppose that we have these two containers, these two chambers, and there's nothing on this side and we have some gases. We have a gas on this side. Um, when we open up this little valve right here and we, make this little, we open this little pathway, um, when we open that, those gases are going to immediately, that gas is going to immediately begin to spread out and it's going to fill both sides equally. Um, so this is what we mean by gases can spread out and fill the container. Now, I do want you to notice that the particles are pretty close together over here. Uh, when gases spread out, they become less dense. The particles uh, get further apart. They're less concentrated. Um, if you want to look at it like that. So when we talk about gases being able to spread out and fill their container, this is what we would actually be looking at, okay? So we did, we have not talked about this idea yet, which is this idea that gas is spread out, but if we don't have them in a container, well, what happens? Well, um, this, is a, this is a drawing that kind of shows us like sort of what happens over time, okay? So as a gas spreads out, it is going to become uh, less concentrated. Now, so there's no container here. So at 10 seconds, you know, our gas particles are going to be pretty close together and it's going to be contained in a small space. You know, at 20 seconds, those particles are going to get farther apart. At 30 seconds, they're going to get even further apart. So as time moves on, if we don't have gases uh, in a container, uh, they're going to become, you know, less concentrated. And like if this gas has a smell, uh, it's going to become the odor or the smell is going to get weaker or harder to smell. And you guys are all kind of familiar with this. Um, if you really think about it, the further away you get from something, the harder it is to smell that thing. And, uh, you know, smelling is based on oftentimes uh, these particles that are in the air and also gases. So gases will spread out indefinitely, which means basically forever. Okay. So in, when they're not in a, in a, con a sealed container, a closed container, when they're just uh, left to escape completely, they're going to spread out indefinitely. Now, uh, this looks similar to uh, the setup we had before. Uh, and we have one gas that's made of these blue particles on one side and another gas that's made of the red particles. Now, um, so if this is our starting condition, when we open this pathway, when we open this valve between them, these gases are going to mix together. There is so much energy in these particles. Um, that's why the gases do the mixing. Remember, they're able to bounce around and uh, fly around randomly at very high speeds, over 1,500 miles an hour. So this is going to cause them to evenly mix, to randomly mix. So in this situation, uh, gases would mix. These two gases would always mix. If you think about the air around you, uh, the air around you is a mixture of gases. Uh, there's a lot of nitrogen gas, there's some oxygen gas, some argon, some carbon dioxide, but all of those gases in our atmosphere are mostly evenly mixed. Um, so that's because gases will evenly mix with one another. Uh, this, is, this is sort of a new idea, but not really for most of you. Uh, the gases are what we call compressible, which means they can be pressed closer together. So for example, um, if we were to take uh, if we were to take this and put a gas in this seal container, this is, a, this is a little cylinder and it has a little piston or a little cover at the top that we can push down. And we can see this is a little pressure gauge, okay? If we start pressing down uh, on, this, uh, on this piston, uh, on this little cover here, these, gases, these gas bars are gonna be forced closer and closer together. We can't do that with solids and liquids, right? We can't just force the particles closer together because they're already very close together. But with gases, we can absolutely force the particles to be closer together. And uh, this would be an example. And so this is what creates uh, pressure. So over here where the particles are far apart, they're still moving at very high speeds. We're gonna have very low pressure and we can see that by the gauge. Uh, but if we take and give them less space to move around in, um, <clears throat> we can see that that's gonna create some high pressure. 
And the particles here are just very close together, still lots of movement. Uh, many of you are already familiar with uh, lots of situations where we compress gases. If you have one of those uh, barbecues that takes a propane tank, uh, that has some compressed gas in it. If you've ever seen one of these uh, cans of compressed air, people use it to dust things off, uh, this is a compressed gas. Uh, any aerosol can, like if you've got spray deodorant or hairspray or something like that, um, there's a liquid in there, but there's also a gas that's been compressed in there that is, um, when we push the trigger, it wants to escape, okay? And that's what pushes uh, the, the liquid or the, uh, the vapor out, okay? So gases are also compressible. We're able to squeeze them and make them fit into smaller containers uh, because there is room between the particles, and this creates pressure. I don't know. Uh, so whenever in class I talk about uh, gases, um, one thing that's very helpful when we're thinking about gases spreading out is to think about toots or farts. Um, the reason I think that that can be handy is because you've all been, you've all experienced those, and even though you can't see them, you know how they move around around you, um, and that's quite disgusting. Uh, so we will stop there for today. Uh, just a little bit more about gases changing volume. Gases are invisible, so they're a little bit harder to understand. I hope you guys have a great day.